Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you all doing? Um, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Marcy, I'm 53 years old and I am on the weight loss journey. I'm on a GLP-1 injectable weight loss medication. Um, I'm on Tazepatide. And yeah, if you're returning back, thank you so much. It is another weekly update to see how I'm getting on. So we're gonna be talking about week six today. Um, any side effects, how I've managed, and obviously I've been away for a few days in Scotland at the wedding. So yeah, we're gonna talk about all of that. And before we do begin, I just go over a few little things first of all. Um, so yeah, welcome. Thank you for clicking on my video. And thank you to everybody that's been watching all of my videos, taking the time to subscribe to my channel, to like my videos, to give me comments, tips, share your own personal journeys with me as well. Honestly, I'm just loving the engagement that you're all just just giving it is fantastic i'm loving reading your comments i'm loving replying to you all so yeah please do keep them coming it is just fantastic and um, i have got a few playlists on my channel so if you're on a glp1 journey if you're thinking about it or if you're just interested i really do hope you're going to stick around with me on my journey um it's been a roller coaster the last couple of weeks since i first uploaded my my first video about this and i'm so pleased i did i've met loads of lovely people on here and the support i'm feeling is incredible i just i don't feel i could do this journey now without you it's just helping me so so much so yeah i've got a couple of different playlists on my channel i'll link them in the description box down below and as a pinned comment so i have got um one of my playlists is called GLP-1 Diaries. In there, I'm going to have like, these weekly updates as well as my monthly updates. And then I've got just like a chatty daily vlog kind of playlist. And that's called Chatty Vlogs. <laughs> but that's got lots of other things in it as well. Plus, um, I've got another playlist called, I think it's like my weight loss journey or something like that. So in there, I've got all of like my chatty daily vlogs in there as well as previous videos from when I've done Weight Watchers, Slimming World, 75 Soft, you name it, I've tried it. So that's where you're going to find everything. Um, I also film loads of other types of videos as well. Sort of like shopping, beauty, crafting, all sorts. So hopefully there's going to be a bit of something that in, keeps you interested. But I know that most of you are here for GLP-1 journey, which I'm like so, so excited about. So yeah, I'm on Tazepatide, which is Bunjaro, which is the... Um, it's MHRA approved drug for the treatment of obesity here in the UK as well as for diabetes. Um, if you're in the US, it may come under um, ZepBound and there are lots of your own compounds as well. Um, you can also get Wegovy in the UK for obesity, which is um, semaglutide, which is a Zempic. So no matter what you're on, um, I just you're all welcome. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to have you here. So I have... My first four weeks were on 2.5 milligrams and I am now on five milligrams. My injection day, well, I started my journey on the 21st of May. Just a quick like recap of everything, just in case you're new here. But yeah, you just watch me other videos. But my first injection was on the 21st of May, which was a Tuesday. So my weigh-in days are always on a Tuesday. My injection day has been brought back a little bit earlier just to... Um, make it a bit easier for me for the wedding I've just been to this week, which we'll have a chat about. And um, yeah, but I just want to keep my weigh-in days for now on a Tuesday. So it's a little bit, injection days aren't quite the same as weigh days now, but it's fine. And um, just sort of talk about our symptoms, talk about my week. And then, um, yeah, so the weekly updates are going to be focusing on side effects and my weight loss. And we'll look at my Renfo scales app and just have a little look at the graphs and, and um, things in there to see how things are progressing on and I'll make plans for the upcoming week just see if there's any obstacles in my way or things that might be a bit tricky or if I'm having any side effects how I might sort of try and alleviate those symptoms and then my monthly updates are a little bit more fun in a way in that we're looking at more of like well, we'll recap what the total monthly loss was then we do like the non-scale victories, those things that just kind of keep us happy, keep us motivated. Um, so in that, I'll focus on measurements. We try on clothes <laughs> that are too small. Um, what else do I do? Oh, we do progress photos. I've got a belt, which I've got around my waist to um, see how far along I can get that belt to go in. So yeah, that's where we ch chat about all those sorts of things. And um, yeah, I just think, 
as time goes on, those are going to be becoming more and more important. So yeah, this week, um, let's go back. So if you remember, I finished off um, like week five update. When I did that update, I had just felt the day before I, it was the first really bad day I've had of symptoms. Um, I've been pretty scot-free up until now, I think. But um, yeah, on the very last day of my week five, I'd been very nauseous. I'd been headachey. I'd been tired. And looking at that, I just, I think overall, I think it was just adjustment to my new dose, but also... I'd been eating very low calories just because I hadn't been hungry. The suppression had been really good. Um, and I was wanting to focus on this week on getting in more calories. And I've certainly managed to do that. Um, leading up until this past week, I think my calories had been around about 800 to about 1100 max. And I was really wanting to try and be hitting about 1300 calories a day um, if possible. So I've worked hard at that. So I'm going to go back to last Tuesday when I weighed in and then I'm just going to go through and just let you know how my symptoms have been all this week, how I've managed um, being away from home and sort of staying in the hotel, being at a wedding, socialising, alcohol, different food, what I've learnt, what I do differently and um, yeah, I think it's been a really useful week um, in so many ways. It's been a very challenging week because I've just, like I said, been out of my own home environment and boy, it can really affect your weight loss. <laughs> it really can. So um, yeah, going back to last Tuesday, I did my update and I'd been feeling pretty unwell the day before. Um, by the time I filmed my video, I'd been starting to feel um, quite a bit better yeah, so like last Tuesday, I just felt a bit nauseous, a little bit dizzy, um, but I was definitely coming out of it. And then really after that, I was feeling not bad. By the time Wednesday came, I felt really good. Um, do check out my daily vlogs as well. I talk about my symptoms in my vlogs. So um, check that out as well if you want a little bit more information. Now, on the Thursday, we were travelling up to Scotland. So I've got my cup of tea here. So like this, like... Nice is the new cool. <laughs> so true. You're all being very cool. <laughs> You're all so nice. Um, so we're travelling up to Scotland. Now, interestingly, my husband nipped into town to get his hair cut before we travelled up. And he rang and says, I'm stopping in at Costa. Do you want me to pick you up a Costa? Now, before, I was like, honestly, I, I would have like a Costa or a takeout coffee virtually every day. And I was just like, oh, no, I don't. And he says, oh, I didn't think you'd want one, but I thought I'd just ring and check anyway. So I was like, oh, wow, that's like, that's a real change for me. Because before I'd be like, oh, yeah, thanks, darling, bring one back. That's great. Um, so we, we travelled up to Scotland. I did really good food choices on the way. I'd had my I had breakfast before I left. Um, on the way up, I picked some sushi, um, which wasn't great. So I left quite a bit of that and um, I had that water and had some Pepsi Max in the car as well. And then we got to the hotel, got in, met, met friends for our tea and we were at a, um, was it a beef eat? It was a beef eater or a brewer's fair. We're at a brewer's fair. So those of you in the UK will kind of know what that menu is like. And it's, there wasn't a lot on there. I didn't feel that I could really choose. Now there was a salad in hindsight, I could maybe have had that, but um, I wanted some quite a bit of protein and things. So I ended up getting like a rib combo. So it's like chicken breast and ribs. They came with chips and salad. I ate my ribs and ate my chicken. So I ate all like the protein, just the meat. I had like two chips <laughs> and a bit of salad that was drenched in dressing. And it was just like really oil. I just didn't enjoy it. But what I had, I was really full. Um, I had a Diet Coke. I did get a small glass of wine with my meal, which like literally took me all night. And then I had Diet Coke after that as well. So I just had like a small glass of wine and that was it. I was really tired though. And I was ready to get back to the hotel. Um, I didn't feel like I was my usual like bouncy self. I mean, I was fine. I was loving it, but I was just knackered and I was ready to come back to the hotel and get to sleep. So yeah, we got back and um, Glenn had a drink in the hotel room from the, the mini bar. 
Um, I didn't bother. I wasn't sort of really interested in that. And we had um, we were in bed by quarter past 11, had such a good sleep that we slept in the next morning. It's quite funny in my vlog. And we missed breakfast, um, which was like terrible. It was wedding day. Thankfully, they weren't getting married till um, the afternoon. So yeah, I missed breakfast. Now that night I'd had some really vivid dreams, which I've not had vivid dreams for quite a while since um, like early on, like the first couple of weeks I had like really vivid dreams. But yeah, I've not had them for like the last sort of couple of weeks. But then that night I had some really, really vivid dreams. Um, Glenn went out, got me like a little um, porridge pot, which I had that. Um, so at least I've had something sort of pretty substantial in my tummy, ready for the wedding. And um, we went down to the bar before the wedding. I just wanted the diet cook, so I thought it's gonna be a long day. Now, throughout the day of the wedding, I did drink alcohol. I had um, two glasses of wine, two vodka and diet cokes, and then there was um, also like reception drinks. There was like Prosecco. So they were in like the Prosecco glasses, but they were like only about half full, two thirds full, they weren't a full glass. And um, so I had two of those, and then there was one on the table for the toast as well. So like, so three part glasses of Prosecco as well. And that's all I had in 13 hours. I had diet cokes in the evening as well. Now, before we went for our meal, um, before we sat down for a meal, I took a glass of wine in with me, which my friend had bought me, and I didn't touch that until about three hours later. Um, I just didn't drink with my meal. I had a glass of Prosecco, but um, I didn't have any wine from the table at all. And normally I'd be like, wait, I, I like a drink in a social situation. I do. I'm a very sociable person. Um, and I just didn't want to drink. It was very, very strange. The food was beautiful. So it was like a melon starter with berries, which was great. Um, I'd chosen the, a chicken breast and it just came with like literally a couple of small potatoes, a little bit of vegetables. Um, really delicious. So nice. And then it was sticky toffee pudding and ice cream for dessert. And I just ate half of my sticky toffee pudding. It was just like a little square. It's on my um, wedding day vlog. You can sort of see a little snippet of it in there. And then um, I gave my husband the rest of my <laughs> dessert. So he was delighted. Um, they had an evening buffet. I had two um, triangles of sandwiches. So like basically like one slice of bread. I had like his egg mayo in one and then I think it was tuna in the other. I, I'd put um, some other bits and pieces on my plate. I didn't eat them. It was like chicken goujon, sausage rolls. I didn't have them, so Glenn ended up having them. I'd got a bit of wedding cake. I didn't even eat the wedding cake, and that's all I had um, for the day. So, yeah. I meant to tell you as well, on the Friday morning when I woke up after that, um, those ribs and like my glass of wine, I woke up with really bad heartburn. I didn't have any antacids with me, but my husband had some, um, he has omeprazole, so I just took one of his omeprazoles and that sorted it out. Um, Cause I just wanted to be going through the wedding like with really awful heartburn. So yeah, really, I felt like it was a pretty successful day at the wedding. I was really pleased with how it had gone. I was really pleased the fact that I just had two glasses of wine, two vodkas and um, a couple of glasses of Prosecco. I think that was pretty, pretty fine. We had a dance, I had a great time. Um, now on the Saturday, this is where it starts to get a bit challenging really because the food was not great. We had I went down for breakfast and I had a cooked breakfast, which I really enjoyed and yet at all. I was starving, so hungry. And um, bear in mind, by the time I got to Saturday, it was a week since my injection because I'd injected on the Saturday the week before because I didn't have any side effects for the wedding. So got to Saturday, really, that was seven days since my injection. I was so hungry. So yeah, I had a fry at breakfast. Um, just got a sandwich at lunchtime. I had a tuna sandwich, I think, and a packet of crisps. Then our evening meal we ate in the hotel. And honestly, I kid you not, the menu was so bad. The food was delicious, but there was nothing healthy on there I could choose. So I chose macaroni cheese, because I thought, well, it's not fried. Yes, it's got cheese in it, but it's pasta. It's a cheesy sauce, but I've been okay with kind of like, um, cheese and things it's not giving me any problems so I thought I'll have macaroni cheese that's far better than having like fish and chips it was there was pie burgers um the literal wasn't even a salad option I was really surprised um so yeah everything seemed to be like come with chips or was fried or was very high fat content so yeah I went for the mac and cheese um it had two little bits of garlic bread here one of them 
and ate all of my macaroni and cheese, but it wasn't a massive portion, but it was delicious. I had um, a small glass of wine with my dinner, and that's all I had there. Um, slept fine, woke up the next day, and oh my gosh, my tummy felt dreadful. I think it was probably from all that cheese, probably the fat content. And I did have a bit of a dodgy belly um, in the morning before breakfast. So I went to breakfast and I literally just had some fruit for breakfast and a slice of toast. And then it was time to come home. So um, home we came. What did we have to eat on the way back? Um, did we get something on the way? I'm just trying to think if we ate something on the way home. I don't think we did. But I did have a hot chocolate from Costa on the way back. Try and think if we had a sandwich. I need to check my vlog. Why can't I remember that? That's terrible. I can't remember. <laughs> um, oh, that's so weird. But anyway, um, my main thing was from that weekend, I was absolutely famished. So as soon as I got home on the Sunday, that was eight days since my injection, I took my injection straight away, which was um, five milligrams again. Um, now... This brings us to Monday. Now, got home, yeah, sorry, I had a curry. Um, I was really famished. So I thought, right, let's just have something substantial to eat. But I woke up through the night, and do you remember, like, a few weeks ago, I've been having, like, that really, like, stuffed, bloated sensation where I literally feel so full. Well, as the evening went on, I was just feeling fuller and fuller and fuller. So I thought, oh, gosh, like, the injection's kicking in. That's fine. You know, I know what to expect, and it just felt a bit uncomfortable. Woke up on the Monday morning and all that bloating sensation had gone. Um, and I was wondering, am I going to feel nauseous or sick like I had done the week before? But I didn't. I felt absolutely fine. I had no symptoms. I just felt really, really hungry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then that brought us up to... Um, then Monday was, like, back to normal. Just a normal day of eating. Really pleased to be back home. Um, so happy to be back home. And I feel like um, it's just you're back in your own environment and you can just control the food that you're eating and the choices you're making a lot better than when you're away and it's just taking away from you a little bit and you're just having to try and make the best choices that you can in a situation which I don't think is really ideal and I felt a bit um challenged is that the right word just like compromised with my choices really because I thought this is not what I would choose to eat so I just felt a little bit disheartened really now in hindsight I think what I could have done on the um on the first night when we met our friends and I had the like the ribs combo really I probably should have chosen the salad and had like a chicken breast with it or some steak or something like that and I could have done that or um I spoke about this in my vlog there was um my friend had pie and mash and it came with veg and what I could have done was I suppose I could have asked for the mash and the veg and then instead of the pie it just says look I have got dietary requirements and um, can I have the chicken instead and I'm sure they would have done that so I think maybe it's just about being um a bit bolder a little bit braver and just requesting something even if it's not on the menu just saying look I have got dietary requirements I can't eat this and this but are you able to put this together for me um I'm not really sure what I could have done for the um, the night that we had our dinner in the hotel unless potentially I could have chosen the pie and left all the pastry just to eat in the meat and the gravy from inside the pie and I think that came with mash and vegetables or was it chips and vegetables? Um, someone did come out with the I saw someone else have the pie and I thought, oh, maybe I could have just eaten the meat. It's one of those things that you just sort of think about. But I do know that in future, I will not be choosing macaroni cheese ever again just because I've had a bad experience with it. So it's kind of put me off. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So there we go. Um, that's very long-winded, isn't it? <laughs> um, but, I mean, really, since I've had my injection on Sunday, I felt fine. Um... I'm filming this a day late. This is now Wednesday. I got weighed yesterday on Tuesday, like I should do. Um, but I just had a really busy day yesterday. I had hospital appointments and things, so I couldn't film. Um, but 
um, I got on the scales. So shall we do our weigh-in and look at the numbers and things? Um, prior to going away, I am one of these people that does jump on the scale every single day, morning and evening, whether you should do or not, that's, there's lots of ideas that suggest that you should, and then you get used to fluctuations and then you, you understand your body better. Other people say you should weigh once a week, but then if you're having a fluctuation when it's up and you're only weighing once a week, rather than thinking, well, actually, the day before I was down and the day after I'm down. You know, I think there's arguments for and against. Me, personally, I'm I'm happy just monitoring it every day. Um, it doesn't bother me. I only log it once a week on my app and things. Um, but prior to going to Scotland, my weight was actually coming down through the week. And um, day after weigh day as well, particularly, it like, dropped off. And I was like, oh, fantastic. That's brilliant. I'm going to be up for a really good loss. And then, obviously, I've gone away and um food choices weren't great i've had alcohol as well um so yeah i'm just kind of like setting the scene <laughs> but um I, I do wonder what my weight would have been had i not been on the glp1 and i've been away i i would have definitely drunk a lot more i'd have probably eaten a lot more um and i think my weight would have been up quite a bit for being away for four days so let me just get this up so i can do a screen recording so i can share with you what i'm looking at Changed my colour scheme, so I'm matching my t-shirt today. <laughs> um, okay, so let me just screen record. There, we're on. That's just my little marker, so I know where to put it. So, strangest thing. So, I got on the scales on Tuesday morning. So, yeah, we got home Monday. Jumped on the scale. No, never. I got home on Sunday. I'm talking garbage. <laughs> and got on the scales on... Tuesday. Now, my weight had been up quite a bit actually from when I got home on the Sunday because obviously I weighed myself. I could see it coming down, coming down, coming down. So, got on the scale, got on my old scales first of all on Tuesday morning and it was showing I'd lost 0.4 of a pound. I thought, oh great, jump on my Renfro scales and they're normally the same and it was showing as only down 0.2. I was like, what? Don't rob me of 0.2 of a pound. So I recalibrated my scales, got back on. It wasn't having any of it. And it still says, no, you've lost 0.2 of a pound. Now I've come on my app today to, to sort of check everything out. And it's only logged it as losing 0.1 of a pound. So I've got no idea what's going on. However, I'm just going to stick with the Renfro scales because I'm looking at those statistics. I'm looking at the charts and the graphs and everything else. So Yes, for week six, I've lost 0 0.1 pound. So I am a bit sad. It's still a little bit off, but come on. It's like, you can't really count it as any sort of way. It's nothing significant at all. But I've been away and I've had the best time at my friend's wedding. I had no side effects at the wedding. Um, but yeah, let's have a little look at this. So yeah, I'm weighing in at 12 stone, 11.9 pounds. Now, some people had asked me if I would um, also tell you what this is in kilos and everything. So I've got it all here. Um, I've been writing down. So yeah, I was on five milligrams for week six. I weighed in, yeah, 12 stone, 11.9, so down 0.1 pound. Um, so that's 179.9 pounds. I had been 180 pounds the week before. Um, in kilos, I am now 81.6 kilos. I've lost 0 0.04 kilos, and my BMI has remained the same at 30. I'm still obese. I just want to get to be 29.9 and be overweight. Is it too much to ask? So um, here we go. We can sort of have a little look here. It is saying that um, here's like my basic numbers here. So it's got my weight in, BMI, my body fat. Um, let's have a little look at this on the graphs first of all. And then I'll open it up and we can see where it is on the sliding chart. I didn't include... Oh, so I've just kicked the tripod sorry i didn't include the graphs last week and a few of you had mentioned that you've got the renfo scales now because i showed you mine and you're really interested in the statistics so we'll just have a, a real quick look at um the screenshots of this just now and then we're going to sort of set some plans in action for the upcoming week 
um, for week seven. Wow, I can't believe how quickly it's going. I really can't. So let's have a little look at the trends. So we set it to monthly and then we can see a graph. So this you can see here, it's like, is it going to come from when I first started? Like the graph is coming down so well. So it's got my weight here where I started and you can just see how that is coming down there we go but you can see that it's just sort of plattered out um this week which is fine so there's my um weight i've got it set for if i do it on the three monthly actually you can see how it's looking there a little bit easier um so you can see that's really come down so that's really um even though i'm flat today it's, it's doing okay um my bmi has stayed the same as you can see um body fat as well everything's pretty much stayed the same this week body fat's the same but look how that's come down from the beginning um again that's my fat free body weight and um my subcutaneous fat everything looks the same the visceral fat's the same body water's increasing but has remained the same from last week my skeletal muscle looks the same. Muscle mass has dipped off a little bit. Um, I haven't done any exercise at all um, this past week. So that's something we need to work on. And we'll have a little chat about that. My bone mass has stayed the same. And my protein has stayed the same. BMR, um, when you actually look, layer looks the same, but actually I'm pretty sure it looked like it had, or it has stayed the same there. Oh, that's interesting i can get a little picture there oh that's on the monthly so you can see how it's fluctuating that's a wee bit better actually and my metabolic age has stayed the same as well now um there was something that i saw here and i thought oh like when you look at this you can see it's dipping off it's this it's that and it's really easy i think with my muscle mass i think i'm losing my muscle mass i'm going to use this as an example um but i just want to show you to not just take a graph and think that you're doing badly it's really important when we look at this part of the um app you can click on the details here and um, so it'll say nine things out to standard but what you can then do is open each sex each section and it'll show you where where you are on the sliding scale so you can actually see if it's normal below average above average so even though something's dipping off on the graph it actually still might be a really good one so you saw my muscle mass was dropping off but we'll look at that in a minute and i'll show you what i mean so yeah my weight here i'm just right on that um brink of um getting into the overweight category which is brilliant that's what i'm wanting my bmi as well is just right on the edge of that category of going into overweight body fat is still way too high i'm still up at 38.9 percent i need to bring that down to at least 32 percent to be getting somewhere um acceptable really subcutaneous fat so that's the fat underneath your skin that's that pinch an inch kind of thing um still high at 34.5 percent need that to be around about 26 percent it seems so far away um visceral fat now this is really interesting because i thought well, what are the numbers? What should it be? You know, it doesn't mean anything to me saying, oh, your visceral fat's 12. Um, but actually, so it's high, but we're nearly in an acceptable range. I was looking up at some um, information on Google last night about visceral fat numbers and things. So if you, I might in, um, you know, a few weeks when they get back from a holiday, start looking at what these different things are and what it actually means um, and why it's important to to sort of um, get an idea of where you're at obviously these scales are 100 accurate and i don't claim that they are but what they do do is give you an idea and they can say it's, it's about a trend report so it's showing you how it's kind of going and as long as things are heading in the right direction that's fine i don't need exact numbers it's just for me to to get an idea how it's going um body water so i'm nearly at normal hydration so that's good i definitely haven't drank as much this week so here's the thing about um it wasn't it was the muscle mass wasn't it so my skeletal mass it still says is low um which i'm not sure about that i feel i've got pretty good um muscle turn and things but that's like the the muscle that's attached to your bones to help with movement and things so i mean i'm not sure 
Um, protein, it says, is still in the inadequate range. Um, my metabolic age is still 59, which hurts a little bit. <laughs> Now, places where I've met the, the standards, so my fat-free body weight, so that's basically, um, so it says, that's something that's on your muscle, I'm assuming that's like your muscle, your skeleton, you know, things like that, that just, everything apart from fat, I think. Um, now, my muscle mass, so you saw how that had dropped off, and this is why it's important just to then look at this. Actually, look, I'm nearly at the top end of that scale, so I can't be too unhappy about that at all. Um, my bone mass is um, good as well, so it's at the top end of average. And then my basal metabolic rate is um, in the standard rate. So even though that kind of dips up and down, um, I'm burning like 1,427 calories um, just existing. So that's fine. Right, let's turn that off. Give me a minute. There we go. So what I'm wanting to look at this week, right, well... Weigh in for week seven. I would normally weigh in on the Tuesday. However, on Tuesday, I shall be sunning myself in Bulgaria. So I will not be here to get weighed. So I thought what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get weighed two days early for my week seven weigh in. So I'll, I'll come back on Sunday and um, do a quick weigh in, see how we go. So obviously that's just going to be like five days weight loss. But I'm really hoping that... I'm back home, back on track, and um, just really focusing um, on my diet, on my hydration. I'm going to get some exercise in. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can make a bit of an impact on the scales before I go away. And then obviously we'll talk on Sunday, my plans for whilst I'm away on holiday, at an all-inclusive hotel for seven days or seven nights. Um, we shall talk about that, uh, but I'll be back from my weigh-in as normal on the, the Tuesday afterwards, although it will literally be the day after travel, and we all know you can have water weight and things, so I just think this one's going to be a really interesting one on the scales. Um, I have been so hungry this week, um, after that initial, only one really awful day of side effects. I definitely feel that I will be moving up to 7.5 milligrams when I've finished my five milligrams and I've actually ordered it and I have got it sat in my fridge. So yeah, I will be moving up to 7.5 milligrams. So if you're interested about that, make sure you continue following me on my journey. Um, I don't know if this has been a really wordy update. If it has, let me know nicely in the comments about what bits you want me to keep in, what you don't. As I say, it's very much, these updates are very much a work in progress. But um, yeah, I think sort of looking at it overall, I've had a day and a half of pretty yucky, feeling rubbish. But other than that, I've been absolutely brilliant. And yeah, absolutely fabulous for the wedding. In hindsight, I don't think I should have moved my injection date a day early um, because that left me a little bit more exposed, I think, over the weekend whilst I was away. Obviously, because then it made me have an eight day in between injections rather than the seven. And also, I wonder, maybe, the fact that I had, I took my five milligram injection, like I took the week, I took my week six injection a day early and I do wonder if that's what led to the nausea feeling as well um maybe because I've not had that before um although I have brought my injection dates forward a little bit but um they're on the lower dose so I don't know let me know how you're getting on if you're on five milligrams what are you thinking I'm just feeling that five milligrams are not really doing it for me like 2.5 did um, but I definitely felt ready to move up to the five from 2.5 because the suppression was going. Um, I'm not snacking. That's the only good thing. I'm still not snacking. However, I am definitely thinking, oh, I'm hungry. And even on an evening, I'm thinking, oh, I'm a bit peckish, but I'm not, um, I'm not acting on those thoughts. I'm staying really good. I'm not snacking between meals. Um, I have increased my calories. 
like which was what my plan was for this week so i'm really happy so again i can't expect as much of a loss because i've almost doubled my calories really to some days because i was on such a low calorie um intake for the first few weeks um and i've definitely been able to sort of hit sort of 13 1400 calories every day and i dare say whilst i was away it was in excess of that so the fact that we even i mean not point one pound off i mean pretty much it's stay the same isn't it if we're honest and um, but the fact i've been able to maintain that and be away for four days at a wedding socializing um i, I feel sort of i can't be too upset about that so yeah i want to really get a good week now before i go away on holiday just so i can get it down and feel like i'm winning and i think once i'm away this weekend away has done me good because it's made me aware of potential pitfalls um whilst eating away from home so yeah if you've got any hints and tips about how to um tackle <laughs> an all-inclusive holiday whilst on munjara do let me know um and yeah but that's it so thank you so much for staying with me this long i'm gonna go now and then um, edit my video, put in the screenshots. And I think, I think this is just absolutely shocking and far too wordy. I'll probably have to film it all over again. God, I hope not. We can't do it twice in a day. Um, so yeah, that is it. I'm, I'm feeling great, guys. I'm feeling so good on this. I'm not feeling unwell. I'm still really, really happy. I am on this journey. It is definitely a marathon, not a sprint. I'm okay having a couple of weeks where the weight loss is slow. That's absolutely fine. I'm looking at the bigger picture. Um, I'm seeing changes. I'm feeling changes. I feel so different. Um, and I can see that my face is slimming down. My body's slimming down. So even though this is why I can't wait to do my monthly updates to get all the non-scale victories sort of done. So yeah, just hang in there. If you feel that you're sort of like you're hitting a brick wall you're not getting the results you want just stick with it stick with the um prescribed guidance don't be i mean i've heard some people are injecting themselves twice a week don't be doing that that's your drug isn't licensed that way and you're not meant to take it that way at all and um, so make sure you just stick to your your weekly injections obviously you can tweak it a day here forwards back depending on social circumstances, work, side, you know, if side effects are impacting on your work and things like that. But you really need to be sticking to the guidance as closely as possible and not adjusting doses, not doing this, not doing that. So that's what I'm trying to do. I am a bit of a rule follower. I do try. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, we're putting drugs into our body and, you know, you've got to remember that this just because we're administering it ourselves doesn't make it any less of a drug with side effects with you know we don't know what the long-term things are so yeah just try and take it as as prescribed if you're having problems go back to your prescriber go back to your gp go back to wherever you got it your provider chat to them tell them what you're feeling and they can help you um yeah so that's it um <laughs> definitely it that's it for today so take care i'm going to see you again very soon I'm off to do a bit more on my daily vlog, so do join me on those. But for now, please have a wonderful day, wonderful week. Um, drop me a bit of love. Drop me a few comments down below. I'm going to have a bit of a chit-chat. But yeah, take care. Mwah! Bye for now. Bye.